Hello, everyone. Greetings from New York City. I'm Chen Zhi Wang, Chinese Studies Librarian of the Civil Star East Asian Library, Columbia University. We warmly welcome you to the webinar Open Access Knowledge and Resources on China in Taiwan during the difficult time of Sino US relations. The China US relations has changed radically the regional China US academic communications and exchange have been interrupted or postponed. It seems increasingly difficult for students and scholars from Columbia and peer institutions to visit China, do field trip and access knowledge and the resources. In addition, the previously open access resources in China are no longer as online accessible to foreigners as before. Taiwan, however, for a long time has been an important leader in open resources, especially for Chinese studies and Taiwanese studies. Therefore, we are having the webinar now, thanks to our three distinguished speakers and thanks to the great support from our East Asian Institute and the East Asian Library. Particularly, the Institute Program Coordinator, Athena Fontenot. We thank you all for your participation. The webinar will be recorded and the recordings will be posted on the YouTube channel of the East Asian Institute. Please post your questions and comments in the chat area. In Q&A time, I read them for our speakers to respond. If too many, I will have to make selection in the interest of time. The presentation order will be Jim first, then Professor Chen, then Ning Wei. Lastly, we will have about 30 minute Q&A. Our first speaker, Jim, is our library director. Most of you know, of course, but please let me briefly introduce him to you, those who may not, know, may not know him. He obtained his bachelor's degree from Fudan University in Shanghai, and he has advanced degrees from the University of Washington. He came to Columbia in 2010. Before that, he served as the director of the International Relations and Pacific Studies Library, East Asian Connection at the University of California, San Diego. He won lots of awards, especially he was awarded the Fulbright Scholar Research Award for him to complete his book, an Annotative Bibliography for Taiwan Film Studies. It was published by Columbia University Press in 2016. Before that, he published an annotated bibliography for Chinese film studies with the Hong Kong University Press in, 20, in 2004. Without further ado, Jim, please. Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank my colleague, Dr. Chen Zhi Wang, and he is the organizer and planner and host for tonight's event. He's the critical person to have our tonight, make our tonight's events possible. And also I would like to thank the Weatherhead East Asian Institute for supporting tonight's events. And I think that Chen Zhou already mentioned, and also I want to thank the Sydney Eastley, an administrative assistant who provides great assistance. And also Chen Zhou gave me a task to give a brief introduction of Columbia University Libraries. We have released uh, a certain amount of uh, digital audio visual materials during the COVID-19. And in 2019, uh, October of 2019, we have received $750,000 from the Mellon Foundation, which will enable Columbia to spend two years from uh, 2019 to 2021 to digitize uh, close to over 22,000 audiovisual materials from our special collections, among which there are about 10% of materials related to Chinese studies. So during the COVID, like the last four months, we so far we have released uh, a special collection of uh, the audio uh, interview recordings about the significant Republican era historical figures, which includes uh, 10 of them is already now online. So that's including the, because the oral history 
early time oral history production is uh, quite different compared to now. During the early time, Columbia started oral history projects in the 50s. That time, the final product is transcriptions without audio you know, tapes available to the public. So when we find out these audio tapes are still available and we digitally preserve them, fix them, now released. So these audio tapes are first time uh, open to the public, first to the Columbia community, some of them open to the complete to the public and eventually after COVID, these materials can be open to the public by request. So now we have released uh, at least uh, 10 of them. Uh, that is uh, Wang Zhenting, Jiang Tingfu, Zhuo Shenshen, Kong Qiangxi, Cai Zhenji, Chen Guangfu, He Lian, Yu Shuhua, Li Zhongren, Gu Weijun. So among them, He Lian, Gu Weijun, uh, Jiang Tingfu, uh, they're open to the public now. The rest of them are open to the Columbia community. So if you log into our special collection, digital uh, collections, you can see all, listen to all of the voices. So this is amazing for us to listen to all these voices after over 70 years. And uh, on the pipelines now we have available is, uh, we already digitized, it's Chen Li Fu, Wu Guozhen, Zhang Fa Kui, Zhang Xue Liang. So we hope Till the uh, two or twenty one October, all this material will be at least uh, all available to Columbia community. Then after COVID to the public. The second collection I want to talk about is uh, the uh, Wang Go Wen film collections. In two thousand fifteen, we received over six hundred ninety uh, the sixteen millimeter film reels, uh, among which we have selected one hundred twenty one digitally preserved now to release through our digital collection. Uh, some of them are related to the Republican era, the cities like uh, Guang, uh, Shanghai, uh, no, Hangzhou, Changshu, Nanjing, Beijing. And the very important thing is that all these films, it's, the, it's uh, filmed, you know, produced in 1948, right before uh, the, uh, the communists took over. Then the second, uh, the third, the last collection I want to mention is uh, we have selected about 31 films produced uh, between the 1920s to early 1952. A lot of films are not available to the you know, market. So it's from our special collection based on the, the new copyrights uh, issued in China 2010. And uh, these films are in the public domain. So. So that's all 30 films open to the public. Everyone can see it. So if we have a chance, please visit our uh, Columbia, so called Digital Collection Columbia. So it's a, the web address is dlc.library.columbia.edu. So now, uh, please allow me to introduce our two uh, great guest speakers. First is a Professor Chen Jiyuan. Uh, Professor Chen holds a PhD from Harvard University in 1992, uh, 1999, sorry, and is currently a research fellow at the Institute of History and Philosophy Academia Seneca in Taiwan. He's also a joint professor of history at the National Taiwan University and the National Taipei University. His major field of research is the culture and the intellectual history of China, with a special interest in the formation of centralized state Confucianism and its intertwined interactions with popular beliefs and the local practices. Aside from academic pursuit, he also serves as the director of the Center for Digital Culture, Academic Seneca, and head of the workshops of the Ming Qing Archives, the Grand Secretariat of the Qing Government, Institute of History and Philosophy, Academic Seneca. Professor has also published a great number of the books, book chapters, and the journal articles. The next one is Mr. Lin Wei Kong. And Lin Wei Kong is our PhD candidate in history and East, uh, and East Asian studies at Columbia University. He studies the relationship between late Imperial China and Indo Asia by supplementing Chinese sources with multilingual materials in Tibetan. Mongolia, Manchu, 
Japanese, and various European languages. He is uh, completing his dissertation entitled Great Convergence Intelligence Collections, Transregional Trade and International Relations Between the Modern China in the Asia and the World, supported by the American Council of the Learned Societies and the Social Science Research Council and the Japan Foundation. He has conducted on-site research in Tibet, in the Mongolia, and the Japan for two years. He received the Yin's Prize for Humanities Research and the Yu Zhizhou Award for Chinese Studies. Lin Wei also earned the Bachelor uh, Summa Kalade in History from National Taiwan University 2012. It's the MA in 2015 and the MPhil in 2018 from Columbia University. He has studied abroad at the Tibet, Kyoto, Kyushu, Peking, and the Renmin Universities. And Lin Wei is also very close to the library. We are always grateful for his contribution to our successful symposium in memory of the Yuming Swiss, modernizing China to diplomatic and missionary pursuits and overseas education. He also helped us to uh, purchase a special archival collections on South China Sea. Now, I'm going to turn the Zoom to the Professor Chen Xi Yuan from Taiwan. Thank you, Jing. Um, could you share, you know, show our uh, present uh, PPT? Okay, because the pandemic is occurring all over the world, not only the state of international politics, but also the field of academic research has become more intense. So the online database are still a good method for researchers to conduct our knowledge, connect our knowledge, and the Taiwan's online databases can let you assess the, another new world. Next. So today's lecture will focus on the field of digital archives which we have been developing for the past 20 years in Taiwan. Regarding this Taiwanese nation project, some projects are totally free. Others you may need to apply for account before using them. Although there are different access methods, they are open to everyone. And so this is my agenda uh, my, um, or my talk, which I would like to cover first to the, the major digital archive uh, institute and then show you uh, the digital archives uh, on Taiwan and Taiwanese study. And then we will turn to the Chinese and technology related digital archive. Next. Okay. Um, well, in the, in the past four decades, Taiwan has uh, continued, continually strived to build a digital tools and database. Digital archiving began very early in Taiwan. In 1984, the first digitalizing project in Adam Seneca, the so-called you know, the, uh, the historical record digitalization project, uh, aimed for developing a full text database of the 25 histories. The Taiwan became a leader in database of Chinese book in the early 1990s. Moreover, the method to start to search and use the traditional and archive the coastal revolution in the field of literature and history search in Taiwan, even impacting the field of technology all over the world. So there were three important national projects from 1998 to you know, 200, uh, to, uh, 2001. In 2002, two national science initiatives was launched. In 2003, the government started the Taiwan e-learning, the digital archives program. And in 2007, Adam Sinek organized a research center for information technology innovation. Uh, next. The center developed into an establishment of the Adam Sinek Center for Digital Culture in 2013, which I'm in charge of now. Next. Next, please. Okay, you can see some more, you know, important digital archive institution in Taiwan on the screen. The first one is Adam Sinekant, which is a public institute belong to office 
or the, or the president, and it was founded in 1928. Adam Seneca inherited a lot of Qing Dennis archives and precious Chinese ancient books, rubbings, and manuscripts. He started his digital collection program in 1984. Next is the National Parts Museum, a world famous museum which was founded in 1925. Um, the National Prize Museum is the most well-established museum in Taiwan and is also an international institute for ancient Chinese art history and sinology research. And next is the National Taiwan University. It began as a you know, Taihoku Imperial University in 1928. Taihoku Imper Imperial University was the first uh, modern university in Taiwan built under Japanese colonial rule in 2007, NTU built a research and development center for digital archives, which was changed to the Research Center for Digital Humanity in 2012. And the last one is the National Central Library. In 1933, a preparatory office for the library was initially found in Nanjing, China, and it started a digital collection in 2002. Next. So here you can see uh, is a kind of division in the history of Taiwan, which are corresponding to division in the history of research in Taiwan. Taiwan maintains a lot of important archaeology sites dating before 1624, such as Sizahang excavation site, preserving the historical culture located in northern Taiwan. After 1624 is Dutch and Spanish Formosa, Taiwan's historical records here mainly concerned the maritime history and visiting missionaries. After 1662, the Ming Dynasty and the Qinlin of Tongning under the rule of Kosinga ruled Taiwan, the Taiwan entered the new chapter of the Chinese history. The Qin Dynasty started to rule Taiwan in 1683. From 1895 to 1945, Taiwan was under Japanese rule and since 1945 has been the Republic of China. Next. Okay, here, you know, learning about Taiwan is not only to know the area of Taiwan, but also a vital introduction into the history of Dutch, the history of China, the history of Japan, among others. And there are various kinds of databases with material in different genres useful, useful to explore each and every period of Taiwan history. Here, for example, is the well-known Danxing archives dating from 1776 to 1895, are important archives from Taiwan during this period under the rule of the Qing Dynasty. We can not only use this archive to learn early Taiwan legal history, local administrative history, and social economic history, but also to know the relation and the interaction between the administrative area of Taiwan and China, I mean local and the central government, so that we can understand how the Qing government ruled Taiwan. Pictured here is an okay, example, an archival record about the gambling fraud, one of the lo local government's the many regulatory areas. Uh, next. Mm. Next, please. Um, during the period of Taiwan under Japanese rule, there are many journals and the periodicals which can help researchers learn about administrative rule. Political activities such as the election or parties about criminal cases of the cultural atmosphere. So if you want to do some research uh, about this period, we can look at, for example, the Taiwan Daily News. Here is the, you can see the, the Taiwan uh, uh, so-called uh, Nichi Nichi symbol databases. Um, so, but there's a various kind of uh, newspaper available to conduct and do some research on this area and on this period. So we can look at, the, for example, the Taiwan Daily News, uh, a well-known newspaper that was in the publication for the longest period of time. Next. Next, okay. And if you want to do some research for the Taiwan Daily News, you, you can use a database or institute which have purchased these records. 
such as Messinica and NTU. And there's three database for Taiwan Daily News, a Chinese version, Japanese version, and the TTS version, which is the last one integrated Chinese and the Japanese. From the data, we can know that Taiwan Daily News reported on the public, public pastimes, such as, well, example, Mahjong, one of the most popular tabletop games in Chinese history. Next. So, you know, I take the Chinese version, for example, and you, if you enter the database, you can see the number of search results for the daily news in three historical periods, namely Meiji, uh, Taisho, and Showa areas. And you can also need to filter the type of newspaper in the era. Secondly, you can select and search according to the section, edition and category of newspaper. Next. And you can you know, select keywords to take. This article in this results is about the case of several prostitutes gathering together to gamble with mahjong. Next. So this is the original. You can also see the original image, the digitalized image of this paper. Next. Great. Okay, next. Uh, so this is an example of the uh, you know, uh, article you can find, including illustration. Here's an example of the 28-year-old uh, you know, Kobayashi Ayako became a businesswoman playing mahjong for the Mitsui company. Uh, next. And this is Agdem Seneca's diary, I'm sorry, diary knowledge bank. A database. These diaries were written during the period of Japanese rule. These diaries are full text, including annotations. And my colleagues at the Institute of Taiwanese History are continuing to update the database with new diaries. Although in the first five years of the Dutch Formosa period, there was no system for lock books, but after 1629, written official lock books become routine work. Here is an example, next. A record from the Journal of the Four Zealandia dated from 1629 to 1662. These journals record Dutch rule in Taiwan regarding the situation in every administrative area and the activity of marine transportation. In particular, there was also records about the you know, indigenous people. These records are important archives for research and uh, you know, during the period of Dutch Formosa. Moreover, we can you know, know many intellectual activities from this diary, such as a view about the government and the event in society, or the notes written down about the social organization or the you know, medical system. We can connect the history and the culture to these people's diaries and the events in their daily life. Next. Next, please. Okay. So, for example, you want to know about, about Mahjong in Taiwanese society, we can search the diary database. So we can see there's a, um, next. Okay, it's a, around in the 366 results. And we can look at the diary of the Wu Xinrong, a Taiwanese doctor who was one of the elite intellectual class. We can see how much Mahjong he was playing. In fact, he played so much not considered. You know, next. The mahjong is kind of bad habit for him. I'm sorry, next. Here, you know, he spent a lot of time, you know, even one third of November, you know, um, 1937 playing mahjong with his comrade. And uh, so, we can use the Wu's diary, also can be used to calculate where he spent time playing Mahjong. Uh, next. And in fact, you know, he played Mahjong so much, he considered his kind of bad habit. So once he reflected deeply on this and throw his Mahjong set down the toilet to show his determination to stop his bad habit. However, if you will continue to read his diary, we can also find that he still continued to play mahjong. 
So in this era, many Chinese intellectual study overseas, especially in Japan. Therefore, by understanding this data on Taiwanese history, you can understand that Taiwan is not simply Taiwan, but part of large world history. Next. Um, here is the academic histori historica. He also um, building a lot, you know, uh, digital archive database uh, open for the public. The like, uh, academic historica is a national history institute that is the government agency responsible for compiling the history of the Republic of China, and it was built in 1914. Um, Academ Academia Historica has kept many crucial official documents and data concerning the administration of Taiwan. Um, the importance of Academia Historica is not only in preserving official documents and creating at the government relocation in 1949, but also in retaining the old records between 1912 to 1949. We all know that the second historical archive of China located today in Nanjing also holds some similar records, mainly from 1912 to 1949. But its, uh, it's application process is very complex and making it very hard to get the data you need. In other words, the data and the records in Academia, Academia Historica will become more and more important for research access. Next. So here is the, if you, 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 you want to find some, you know, any result about Chiang Kai-she, any records and material concerning Chiang Kai-she, here is, you know, you can find a result. And the result for Chiang Kai-she are mostly from 1930 to 1950 in the digital archive database of Academia Historica. Next. And this is a record of Chiang Kai-shek's experience the handling party and the government affairs. And this is original handwriting, you know, work. Next. And you want to continue to do some research on the Ma Jiang, Ma Chue. I mean, uh, how people, you know, here is like the, the Guangdong the government try to, you know, um, uh, uh, forbid the plane of Ma Jiang. But next, and you can also see the John Guild of the restaurants and the tea house in Guangzhou send a petition to the local government to leave the band on Mahjong. Next. And we also have the, you know, build a kind of Taiwan Union catalog. So it's kind of portal to Taiwanese database. And the so-called digital archive.tw is one platforming showcasing the digital achievement of, you know, Academic Seneca Center for Digital Culture. So you can browse the catalog of Taiwan's the accumulated the digital knowledge. And he provided metadata, digital file preview and classification structure for our archive collection and the teaching material. So most importantly, each entry links back to the original database where it was found. So from here, you can explore further into the digital archive data and better understand the special feature of Taiwan's digital archive institutions. Next. So this is the list of it. Uh, so you, you can use this kind of portal to know how many databases has built in Taiwan in the past 20 years. Okay, next. So now maybe we should turn into um, uh, the study of the Sinology study in Taiwan. Um, for Sinology studies, Taiwan provided four major genres of database for scholars to explore. The first two are Robbins and the Chinese book. Next. The next two database genres are Qing Dynasty Archive and the Modern Historiography. Next. So rubbing a piece of paper upon which are rubs in the design textures of world's artifacts, such as from stone inscription, bronze vessel, turtle shells, or animal bones. So people often use shun rice paper and ink to copy the inscription or ornaments from these artworks. 
At the Institute of History and Philology in the Academic Seneca, a large number of robins of various dynasty and generation are collected. So these precious robins can be used to compare the literature passed down through generation to better understand the ancient Chinese history and the culture regarding divination, sacrifice, mythology, religion, and so on and so forth. And next. So here are the robin data based on next. Yeah. Now here are robin data based on diverse subjects. The first one is the, the oral, you know, the digital archive, the oracle bone robins. The second is the, you know, you know, a digital archive, the bronze robins. The collection including full service robins and the numerous inscription robins. This historical material can serve as kind of supplementary material when researchers refer to the antique collected by the National Palace Museum. And we can learn more about the evolution and development of Chinese characters from bronze inscriptions. The third one is the robins of the Han Dynasty stone reliefs. Among early Chinese historical material, mythology, legend, and historical facts are often mixed and confused. And these stone reliefs can be treated not only as historical material for methodological literature study, but also as kind of important materials for the study of Chinese religion, for example. Next. And we also have the, the so-called Buddhist rabbins. And this collection can be traced back to the 5th century up to the 20th century. The category including vows and prayers left by the creator who made the stone reliefs. The origin of his crafting and organization of the religious assembly, which are important historical reference point for the medieval society. And the second one here is the, the, the Liao Jing Yuan Robins. The collection mainly comprised robins from the Liao, Jing, and Yuan dynasty, uh, with the Yuan dynasty robin taking up the majority of the collection. In addition to Chinese characters, the language and minority groups such as the Tibetan, Mongolian, and Sanskrit are also present in these robins. And the last one is, the, is a collection by the National Central Library. The National Central Library's robins of bronze and stone database um, holds more than you know, 6,000 pieces and uh, you know, 12,000 picture robins. This collection of bronze, the bronze and stone robins were gathered from diverse sources in different regions, which are doing the worst you know, uh, researching. Next. Now, as for the you know, Chinese text collection, uh, you, all, you all know that you know, there's a various kind of you know, database concerning the Chinese book and the text, um, the Diaolong database, the C text, and the database of Chinese classic ancient books, Zhongguo Jiben Guji Ku. And we also had a Scripta Seneca database, Han Ji. Um, for the, for the, you know, IH for the Institute of History and Philo you know, Philology, Sukuta Seneca database, we are committed to higher standard for being clean, clear, and correct in all content across our entire rare collection of archives. We are dedicated to develop a kind of from full text in the search database to a kind of smart data by integrating database tools such as, you know, for statistical analysis or data visualization. Next. So in Chinese, the word index, in the, used to be translated, you know, in the, which means to guiding new knowledge or acquiring new, you know, new knowledge. Nowadays, it's translated as kind of jianso, close to the literal meaning in English. In the past, we have, you know, many look up the information in indexes, but now the search um, information in Sukta Seneca database, if you have to do is to type in some keywords and you can find the material you need from a full text search of hundreds of thousands of texts. Furthermore, we are now, you know, trying to ingrate in smart, smarter way to gather data. For example, beside the keywords result alone, 
the word frequency within materials will also be accumulated and recorded. From the word frequencies, you can deduct, deduce the importance of a certain word and their reference to certain errors and the meaning of such relationship. You can also you know, mark the keywords in the text which allows research to reveal the materials in a more systematic way and to infuse or organize application or evolution of keywords in classical text. So we are also incorporating the linked data to allow easy connection and referencing across different systems. Next. Um, in Taiwan, the major database that hold the archives of ancient literature are shown on this slide. They are okay, Sukhita Sinica, as we you know, just discussed. And also there's a kind of digital archive online, um, try to incorporate 12 digital database established by the Institute of History and Philology. Um, the third is the National Parts Museum database of rare books and the National Central Library Rare Books and the Special Collection Database. Next. So, um, so we will try to, you know, in um, the special feature of the IHP Smita Sinica database, you know, we try to collect, you know, uh, philosophy, history, we have the latest uh, series which include Taoist canon and Buddhist uh, literature for comprehensive searching. And we'll try to you know, make, you know, effort, make every effort to ensure the authenticity and accuracy of literature held by the database. And um, it's also equipped with a different version of text that can be compared. And we also included the digitalized image of ancient text. Now, let me use the kind of, um, uh, the Yellow Queen Tower, uh, a famous, uh, um, building, ancient building, which is located in Wuhan, is kind of research uh, keywords. Next. So, you know, if you, you keyword the, the, the term, we can do a kind of simple, you know, keyword search, which everyone should know about it, the Yellow Queen Tower, and then next. And you, you can find um, how many hits and how many results you had from this uh, simple, you know, keyword search next. And you, you can mark, you know, you can find the each and every entry uh, the original paper next in the original text. And you can also compare the text next. And there's also, you know, you can, can compare the full text research result with the original image. Next. So if you, you can do some kind of advanced search, which, you know, you can combine, you know, the yellow crane tower with the fruit, for example, or immortals, and then you can find the result. Next. Yeah, so it can show you, you know, the relation about the immortals and the you know, yellow crane tower, and you can compare uh, different you know, texts all together. You know, next. And you can also you know, compare with the original image. Uh, thanks. Next. And you can also do like, you know, we also have, you know, had a way to connect the, the entries, the result with the, for example, the GIS system. So here, for example, is you can, you know, locate the, the Yellow Queen Tower the, with its location Wuchang next. Yeah. And you can do some further research about the research, the, you know, of the geographical, you know, uh, information with the result. Next. Yeah. Oh, you, you can also, you know, link with the, our CBDD, um, which the, we do in the incorporation with the Harvard 
And this is, um, uh, if you, you find a, a yellow crane tower, which the government general was died, and was killed in yellow crane tower. And you can find the personal biographical sketch uh, with a hyperlink next. So this is the hyperlink we built, you know, in the past, uh, along with the National Parks Museum. So you can learn about uh, the person like Wang Genshou, who was killed in Wuchang um, uh, against the Taiping Rebellion. Next. So this kind of metadata all the way and even his the show biography here. Next. And this is, a, you know, we can also, you know, compare the printed errors. Here, if you put in the Wenxiang, they will show you all anything related to the Wenxiang uh, as a kind of series in the name of the books or the, the name of the series. Next. And you also, you know, with the image in the comparison, you can figure out or pinpoint the error of the of the term, you know, the typo. Next. So you can browse the catalog and you can do the image comparison next. And this is also the, the test comparison. Next. Okay, so if you want to use the, the so-called uh, the digital archive online system, you can uh, keyword, you, you know, uh, put the keywords Huang He Lo here and uh, next. And you will find there's the well, you can find the result from the rare book collection. Here, this is uh, illustrated the yellow crane tower next. So, this is kind of you know, be, you know, it's, it's kind of chance opera, you know, the, the text of the chance opera uh, concerning the yellow crane tower next. So, this is all the, the, the full you know, database you can find it next. And you can also use the the uh, the Sanmen Gu Chiku from National Parks Museum and do your research. Next. And you will find the result and then next. Yeah. And so now this is, uh, you know, the, the, the open data by the National Parks Museum and you will find the, the result of Yellow Crane Tower next. And so you will find it in 1850, you can also e even to, you know, to assess the image of the Yellow Crane Tower, you know, this is a, a, a combat against the Taiping armies in Wuchang. Next. Next. Okay, so if you want to, you know, do some research, you can also use the National Central Library to do your research here. And they also have the Gu Ji and Te Chang Wen Xian Zi Yuan is, you know, the rare books and the ancient books database. Next. In, in the National Central Library, you know, special collection, the platform requires a kind of specific name of books or, or author or ISBN for research. So you cannot search for the information by entering the keywords. However, you can view the full digitalized image from the ancient books. Take the yellow crane tower, for example, again, if you can find the names here, like, you know, device, you know, who wrote a lot of points relate to the yellow crane tower. So you can use the information search on the National Central Library Special Collection website to find a copy of the full image. Here is an example. Next. Yeah, there's another image of them. And if looking at the classical Chinese text again, the Sukitan Seneca database is excellent resources. Next. Yeah. The Sukitan Seneca database built by you know, uh, my institute cover a wide variety of collection. Um, well, it can be roughly put into the five uh, significant categories. One is rare book collection. The database collector varies the authentic originals held by the Fu Senyan Memorial Library, including here like Lei Shu, San Cai Tu Hui, Wu Jing Zhongyang, and etc. The 
script just thinly database provide both digitalized image and the e-text for the authentic literature that you know, the research can compare the different versions directly on the platform. The second one is the Minqing historical material. The Minqing historical material was printed during the 19, 1930 and the 1975, divided into 10 sections, um, which contain the historical material official archives from the Ming Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty in 1766. The third is the treaty and the charters. This collection was added by, by Yang Foreign Affairs Office in the Qing Dynasty. And the fourth is the ancient medical text. The collection including cases like the so-called Companion of Material Medica, Ben Cao Gang Wu, and also many more rare and specialized texts such as Zhong Jian Fu Ren Fang, written in the Song Dynasty, summarize the prescription and the most rare and the poisonous ingredients. So it's an unusual and important historical source to study Chinese medicine in Japan. And of course, there's also new religious literature in the Dao's texts, such as the Dao's canon, has been archived to provide abandoned material for study. And furthermore, there's a Catholic text from Ming Qing Dynasty also included, um, which improve, you know, improves the further understanding of Catholic missionaries at a time and develop further comparative study of cultural science and religion. And we also have the so-called uh, uh, the great and you know, uh, Buddhist research uh, about uh, you know Dharma drowned. And the sixth one, there's uh, you know other more you know features about the Sri Tan you know database worth you to you know go further to explore. Next. Now we have also have launched a collaboration in a project with the National Institute of Korean History. Um, you know, the veritable record of the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty and the Korean Joseon Dynasty has been digitalized for the IHP and the Srita Sinica database. They are especially interesting because they are provided research with different perspectives, even for the same historical event. The reason for this is because, you know, it was kind of susurrating relationship between China and Korea. For example, you look for information regarding, you know, uh, next. Regarding Unix, you can see from Ming records that the Bing Dynasty requested Unix from Korea and from the Joseon Dynasty records, you can find historical record that the Joseon Dynasty were tributing Unix to the Ming Dynasty, to the Ming government. Next. No, oh, next. So you can find this in uh, you know, a cross reference about it. Um, the very old Chinese religious literature in the uh, Hanji, like the Zheng Tong Dao's canon, copied by Shanghai's publisher Han Fenlou lies in collection, not only the text or documents, but also objects such as the talismans. Traditional Chinese characters carry more meanings than simply the font or definition that, you know, grammatologists study, you know, nowadays. Traditional Chinese characters actually hold religious significance. The ancient Chinese believed that words had the power to send message directly into the heaven where the gods reside. So that is, if you master the other words, you can have the ability to communicate with the deity and gods. Next. Now, so there's also the image of the, uh, of the illustration from the Dao's canon, next. And there's also more, you know, uh, religious resources concerning the Ming Dynasty Catholic text, next. So you can find the various kinds of you know, materials concerning the Catholic missionaries uh, in the Hanji database. Next. So this is also another one is a C beta. Okay, next. 
and also some you know medical material. Uh, here is the compendium of so material medica. Uh, this is a special you know edition of the Ben Cao. Next. Mm. But given the time, I should know shorter my 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 presentation. I'm so sorry. During the Sino-Japanese War, many treasures from the Imperial Palace in Beijing, I mean in the Forbidden City, was moved to south in various kind of area. In the fall of 1948, the situation of the Chinese Civil Wars were reversed. So at the beginning of December 1948, the Central Museum's the Board of Directors convened a meeting to select the most precious pieces to be shipped with the remaining collection to be moved as far as possible. And so the first, you know, 320 boxes of the cultural relics of Forbidden City and 200 and more boxes of the uh, office of the Central Museum was lo loaded onto a Navy transport and shipped to Keelung. At the same time, documents and antiques and books from Academic Sinica Institute of History and Philology, Central Library, and the Foreign Minister was also loaded on ship to Taiwan. On January 1949, the second batch of naval ferries carry the cultural relics departed. So finally, on January 30th, 1949, the third batch of the relics set now by Navy transport shipped. Among which the Qing Dynasty archive was transported also in a long route through Beijing, you know, starting from 1933, from Beijing, Sichuan, Changsha, Shanghai, and finally end up in Taiwan. Next. So um, for the study, you know, Taiwan has a lot of the material concerning the Qing archives. Um, the first is the archive of the Grand Secretariat, um, put together by the Institution of History and Philology. It collected about 310,000 items, including Imperial Act Decree, Imperial Added Memorial, Tribute Documents, Examination Question, Examination Paper, Rules of Successful Examination Candidates, and et cetera, et cetera. So the bulk of these documents are made of the, the Imperial Routine Memorial. The second is the, the database set up and managed by the National Policy Museum, which includes the official documents, local uh, gazetteers, historical museum records, and the Office of Military and Political Affairs record, and uh, some of the so-called Zhadang, miscellaneous records. And we also, just as I mentioned earlier, we also have a Danxin archive as a kind of local government. Uh, database, which is held by the National Taiwan University. Um, we collect a lot of the local and administrative and judicial documents of Danshui Subprefecture, Taipei Prefecture, and the Xinzhu County from 1776 to 1895, which are primary sources for research on Taiwan during the Qing rule. From document, you can also see the relation between China and Taiwan during the Qing rule which presented as central versus local government relationship, as well as structurally as core versus periphery relationship. Next. So, Fu Sunyan, uh, the founding father of my institute, and also the National Taiwan University, he once said the archive treasures, including private written account, the limited knowledge from official document alone are unreliable to encompass a dynasty. He believed the political facts are all in this archive. Next. So we have over you know, 240 records have been digitalized since 2001. And you're welcome to explore the so-called the archive of the Grand Secretariat. Next. So this is, uh, you know, you can use the, 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 uh, the basic search and the uh, advanced search. Uh, let me take the Kangxi Emperor's last table as an example. You put the Yi Zhao 
I mean, the last testament um, in the database, you can find there's at least three results concerning the last testament of the Kangxi Emperor. You know, maybe several 10 years ago, it's a kind of hippie debate about <clears throat> the legitimacy of the Emperor Yongzheng uh, succession to the throne. So the last testament would regard it as a very important and crucial evidence to show next. This is the last testament of the Emperor Kangxi next. And you can <clears throat> see at the end, you mentioned about the <clears throat> Emperor Yongzhou, uh, Huang Siji Yingzheng, uh, he should be succeeded to the throne, next. And you can also use the Danxing archives to find some, you know, the central, how the central government to send the imperial edit and how the local government responded to it. Here is an example from the Danxing archive, next. So you can find that there's a kind of imperial addict issuing a provincial tax exemption you know, as kind of the, uh, the imperial uh, pardon. Next. And we, we also can find, you know, I like, you know, uh, uh, judicial uh, criminal case uh, in the Danxing archive. So here is the kind of Mr. Liao Lian, an unequal distribution of his harvest led to Aboriginal to murder his 17 years old daughter. Next. So from this document, you should find that you can also find a kind of detail or scenario how they do their investigation. They even pinpoint the murder site on the map. Next. Um, for people who are interested in uh, modern historiography, my colleagues uh, in the Institute of Modern Chinese History also has, has built a kind of searchable database integrating you know, 18 similar databases um, are open to, you know, to the reader. Next. So this is the so-called uh, the modern historical database from the Institute of Modern Chinese History. Next. Next. For example, you, you want to you know, find material about the Mahjong again. <clears throat> so this is the Mahjong. Oh, Mahjong is a kind of a prototype of modern Mahjong game. Next. Mm. And you can find the result. Here is the, the diary. The, of the Gen General Xi Yongchang, he mentioned in his diary that like playing mahjong was the very reason why the society could not make any progress. Next. So uh, up to now, I have introduced the various kind of digital database of Taiwan. The following, uh, please allow me to give you a kind of a brief introduction to digital humanity research tool developed by the Academic Seneca Center for Digital Culture. There are two categories, text analysis research platform and image analysis platform. The text analysis platform um, will offer a built-in function for semantic annotation of text. Next. <clears throat> um, so for calculation word frequency, statistic, or concurring phrase analysis. This is a method of data analysis, which you can find words and phrases that often occur together. And for the text similarity comparison, natural language processing, or spatial temporal data analysis, social network analysis, and the data visualization is available for you to use. <clears throat> Next. So you can, for example, you can use search for Jimson. Next. And you can use the GIS technology to observe the geographical distribution of the Gansao and the Bado to make a comparison, the Croton and the Nickel Ridge. And the image analysis platform, we try to adopt the so-called triple INF standards 
for cross-platform compatibility, as well as function for image comparison, content re, you know, aggregation, and look at open data and semantic annotation and collaborative research. And we also try to use the optical character recognition. Here's a kind of example here. So if you try to find funding here, um, <clears throat> the, for the purpose of research, example of information that can be laid under the word funding, including the actual artifact of the Lu funding, Tao Tiao Wen funding, or animal master decoration funding from various kinds of historical and cultural context. In addition, the funding of Chinese represent a ritual vessel with different design. And most of the pattern can be traced back to ancient mythological motif, which contain a variety of auspicious meaning, so such as the Tao Te pattern. And you can use this in our image analysis platform to compare what you have in your collection with other collection in, in different areas from all the world, like a British Museum, Harvard Art Museum, and the National Parks Museum. Next. Now through the map and you know, coordinate, we also has, you know, we also have the jazz center in Agam Seneca. So we <clears throat> have this kind of geographical information system to do some, you know, for scholars to do some research. Next. <clears throat> and the centuries of Taiwan historical map website features maps from Taiwan's entire history. Here you can see the map from Japanese rule period, which you can check with pictures. Next. And you could also take ancient maps and their land over modern Google Map for comparison. Next. And we also have a so-called reading digital Atlantis website, including nearly 300 real maps um, of the Ming and Qing collected by the Library of Congress, the British Library, and uh, the, the National Library of France. So this project accomplished, you know, uh, is initially in 2014 and provide public with the ability to have, you know, fun browsing map without losing any detail. Because some of the materials are linked to the US Library of Congress. English version are also available upon request but also to increase the public avail availability of digital data and the academic achievement. The center is moving you know, this content from the digital athletics to our open museum. So you can find it in our open museum digital exhibition platform. Next. So here I would like to you know, <clears throat> introduce you to useful portal. Next, I'm sorry. Um, one is the so-called digital resources in niche international Chinese study, so it, which is a database portal website. Through this gateway, users can link to various institutional databases from Taiwan, China, Japan, Europe, and America. Another one is a so-called ACROSS, which is a Taiwan's very first integrated archive search platform, officially built by Taiwan National Archive Administration. It integrates national museum, research institute, library, and more. Next. Mm -hmm. So why, why I has introduced this kind of online open resource in Taiwan. Now research can still you know, access in this difficult situation under COVID-19. As a humanity scholar, I can help but you know, let everyone to introspect. You know, in the world of digital humanity, uh, how we should, you know, define the, the scholar define themselves. In the past, the well-known Taiwanese historian Fu Sinian wrote in his, uh, in his work, you know, object of the Institute of History and Philology, regarding what kind of scholar we should be. He argued that we do not stay cooped up in the library. He said, quote, we are not readers of books. We are simply searching the heaven above to the underground below. 
moving our hands and feet to seek thing out, end quote. Next. So historical research is inseparable from archeology span and searching for material. In aerial digitalization, scholars do not necessarily have to travel up and down the world to collect first-hand archeological information or any material available. We just need to move our hand and feet on the things that we find and these things that we retreat from the searching the heaven and the underworld as a research material. Next. And, but with the vast um, amounts of digital archive and database, as well as the you know, mediation by digital tools, these things are themselves generating their own hands and feet that requires us to put together their connection in a structured and contextualized way. Furthermore, different research institutes must become able to exchange their data and document. We use the link open data. So you will want to you know, you know, comp complement each other work. However, with this you know, terribly conven convenient database, you may wonder in this new era, are we still scholars in the reign of humanity? Next. So do we still study or do we need to only to construct, deconstruct or manipulate the big data um, as knowledge in the digital world? Now there has become a more popular, you know, popular, you know, AI, you know, artificial intelligence has become more popular than before. Under the situation, traditional research fields such as calligraphy, robins, archaeology, will it still be rising or falling? So maybe it's the best of time, and it was the worst of time. And so these are the famous opening lines of the Tale of Two Cities written by Charles Dickens. But what would digital bring to us? Um, in this brand new digital world, New historians are no, no longer readers of books. So do we historians need new discipline or do we still, do we still need a historian? And which I don't have answer to it. Uh, next. Well, like you or not, we all need to embrace the digital trend of the humanities study practice in the future. So thank you for your time and preparation. I'm sorry. Um, I waste too much time. Thank, Thank you. you so much. This is a uh, very rich, and uh, since we uh, don't have too many people, I guess uh, the Q and A time can be shortened. So next speaker, uh, Ning Wei, uh, could you, for instance, uh, zero about in that. about ten minutes? Oh, that's absolutely fine. Ten minutes also could be okay. Uh, yeah. Thank sure. you. Uh, I'd like to thank um, to uh, uh, Director Chen, uh, Dr. Wang, and I think uh, for organizing this um, very informative workshop. I also learned, about, uh, learned a lot from Professor Chen's talk. So I think uh, Professor Chen's uh, presentation uh, is quite uh, comprehensive and covered most parts of um, online resources in Taiwan. So. Uh, for my presentation, I would like to uh, pay much attention to the part of practice, and, um, and especially for uh, from the perspective of PhD, uh, PhD students, um, because as we know, um, many students nowadays, I mean, no matter graduate students or undergraduate students, they couldn't, you know, get, you know, any opportunities to conduct their field works in China or even in Taiwan because of these kinds of, you know, because of the pandemic, um, so um, so probably I think it's also like a good opportunity for our uh, our students to uh, take a uh, take a take a chance to practice uh, uh, you know the use of um, online resources. So next, uh, so here's outline introduction uh, introductions institutions databases examples and conclusions. So um, I think I will just like. Uh, Focus much more on the parts of examples. So next. So um, I think Professor Chen's uh, presentations um, 
um, it's also like he, he, he covers like Taiwan studies first and then about like uh, uh, e-resources related to Sinology and Chinese studies. So basically I frame my uh, presentation in a, a very similar way, but I will uh, pay much attention to the part of practice. Next. So here we got like institutions. Uh, I think most parts uh, are, uh, were already covered by uh, Professor Chen's uh, presentations. Uh, probably the last one, the uh, National Museum of Taiwan uh, History. Um, uh, because the limit of time, Professor Chen uh, um, didn't you know, talk uh, that much about this part. Uh, but the uh, um, National Museum of Taiwan History, uh, which is, uh, is also like uh, very, you know, they also provide like very uh, useful uh, online materials, especially for someone uh, who is interested in the early history of, of Taiwan or like uh, um, the history of uh, indigenous, indigenous people in Taiwan. Uh, they also provide like uh, very useful uh, online materials. Next. Uh, so uh, the first one is, uh, uh, the, I would like to talk about, about Academia, Sinic, uh, Academia Historica, which uh, Professor Chen already covered. Next. Um, so they also provide like uh, lots of links uh, related to other, um, you know, uh, online uh, materials archives in Taiwan, including Academia Sinica or like the National Archives of Taiwan and so on and so forth. So if you get a chance, just use the link to you know, check the resources by yourself. Next. So uh, here, you know, it's like a more practice part. Um, so if you put some keywords like Columbia University in this, data, in this database, actually there are more than a hundred uh, items related to Columbia. So for example, uh, I found like interesting photos of like uh, President Chiang Kai-shek and Professor DeBerry of the Eastern, uh, Eastern Studies at Columbia University. Next. So actually, there are lots of, you know, historical um, data, images, and ancient maps in this, uh, this database. So if you are interested in the history of modern China, especially uh, the Republican period, this uh, database will be very useful to your research. Uh, next. Uh, Professor uh, Chen also covered this part. Uh, so this part is like uh, for the National Palace Museum. Uh, this part is mainly for Qing history. Next. So actually they, they uh, provided like lots of you know, different uh, materials uh, for like the archives of uh, the Grand Council about like Qing historiographies, maps, Chinese classics, and even Tibetan Buddhism. Here uh, the, 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 the third item from the left side, uh, they're actually, um, uh, their libraries uh, in National Palace Museum, they also have like a great collections of uh, Tibetan Buddhist, uh, you know, sources. So they also have like a very uh, nice uh, database for that. Uh, because of the limit of time, I won't uh, introduce this part too much. But uh, you, if you get any chance, you can just like, you know, register, uh, register an account, free account online and just like practice by yourself. Next. Uh, yeah, here's a, 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 a example about like if you put some keywords like mango uh, in the database of the Grand Council, you can find like several, you know, interesting items. And uh, uh, I think the very helpful part is that they will also provide some metadata uh, for re reference. Next, not only the full images. So I think I will skip this part because um, Professor Chen already covered this part. Uh, database provided by the National Library of Taiwan. Next part. So there is a very interesting, uh, uh, in addition to the Chinese classics part, they also provide like a, you know, database of Taiwan memory. And the, so in that memory, there are like many kinds of, you know, uh, local documents, contracts and letters, postcards um, uh, of Taiwan during the uh, Japanese colonial period. So if you get a chance, you can take a look of that. So another interesting thing is here, uh, because the National Taiwan University also like, ha they have like long-standing projects for like digital humanities. And you can just like, uh, you know, if you get a chance, just like Google it. But I would just like focus one interesting tool here. It's called uh, DocuSky. Actually, it's not only like GIS tools, but 
uh, they really, I think this system uh, is featured by uh, GIS, that's called uh, Geography Information System. So next. Um, here is the uh, main uh, page of the Research Center for Digital Humanities at National Taiwan University. So actually you can see there are lots of things related to, to Buddhist studies, to, related to uh, Taiwanese indigenous people, related to Chinese classics, related to um, Qing bureau bureaucratic systems. So actually there are lots of things. So just please, you know, take a look mm -hmm. at it. And the next one, is the, 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 uh, the main part I would like to introduce here is a you know, interesting uh, platform called DocuSky. So actually they, you know, if you use the uh, CBDB, CB, uh, CBDB provided by Harvard, uh, they share some similarity, but um, this one uh, also have like many, many, you know, interesting, uh, you know, geographic layers for like, um, you know, uh, the, you know, the proper names, the, the, the place names uh, in different uh, ch uh, Chinese his historical periods. So here is the, um, the prefecture names of uh, each uh, provinces in, uh, during the Ch uh, Qing Dynasty. And you can just take a look of it. Next. Uh, so this one is uh, the Na National uh, Museum of Taiwan History. And I think it's very very useful for someone studying Taiwan studies. Next. So um, actually, there are like you know I think more than twenty or thirty uh, different databases are uh, provided by this museum. So if you get a chance, you can just take a look at it. So I think it's featured by not only like the, uh, the indigenous people in Taiwan, but also like you know. The, the, the Taiwanese, you know, sources in Dutch, you know, Kosinga and like Japanese periods. Next. So the uh, last database I would like to introduce is about the C beta. I think uh, Professor Chen also covered this part. Uh, next. So it's free online and um, you can just like put some Chinese keywords in it and it's very organized and they have like different um, versions and especially I think it's center um, uh, Taisho, so the Japanese um, uh, version of Tripitakas. And they, are also, they also uh, include lots of, you know, Chinese translations of Tibetan Buddhist texts. So if for someone studying uh, Tibetan Buddhist, and it, also, it, it can also be very helpful. And I think this one is quite renowned, so I don't want to waste too much time to introduce this next. So, um, because uh, Dr. Wang asked me if it is possible to introduce uh, my experience for uh, practice uh, or integrate digital re resources in my own research. So I will just give two brief examples here uh, to give you a sense for, um, you know, how to use uh, digital materials uh, in your own research. So I published a paper about like, uh, about Tibetan Buddhist monasteries in Ando, which locates between Tibet and, you know, Northwest China. Next. So for example, uh, because at the time, I basically, I draft this paper in 2014. Uh, at the time I was serving that, uh, you know, you know, uh, I was serving in Taiwanese army. Uh, so I didn't get any chance or too, too much time to, you know, you know, to, to, to conduct data mining in libraries because when I was in the army, so I have to use these kind of uh, online sources to go Google, Google uh, to 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 you know fulfill the part of data mining. So I I you know during that period I realized that okay the um, the grant um, secretariat database provided by Academia Sinica is very helpful. So I put something like Lama or like Fansen Tibetan Buddhist like um, in this uh, database next. So actually, we, I found like hundreds of you know items, but I, I need to narrow it down. So there is a very useful like uh, um, I would say like a function called Jing Jie Jian or, or advanced uh, search. So I put like something like you know, Fan Sen, the so-called barbarian monks in, in Chinese uh, document. But uh, I also want to take a look of like something in Manchu or in Tibetan. So if you if you get a chance to take a look at a function called like the advanced search, 
you can put something like Qingwen or, li or literally like Manchu uh, or like Zhangwen or Tibetan, then you can narrow it down. So for example, here, here we got like a, a bilingual uh, edict in Chinese and Manchu, which is uh, uh, issued by the Kangxi Emperor to um, uh, like a, a Tibetan Buddhist abbot in Ando called uh, Gemsa Nimbo. So this actually the, the first hand primary source, uh, sources provides uh, our Tibetologists like a new perspective to take a look of the you know, interactions between uh, you know, the Qing dynasty and local Tibetans in Amdo. Next. So I published this, uh, this paper uh, uh, three years ago, two years ago. Next. Next. So here we, we, we I mentioned uh, I used uh, uh, Nego Da Ku, or the, the archives of the, of the uh, Grand Secretariat. Next. The second example is about uh, uh, Chen Yinke, uh, who is a, who was a, like a, one of the most prom, uh, prominent uh, Chinese, Chinese historians introduced um, Oriental philology to modern China. Mm -hmm. So many, so many people talk about uh, Chen Yinke, but nobody really, I mean, very, very few scholars really check, you know, Chen Yinke's documents preserved in the uh, IHB at Academia Sinica. So they actually provide like a very like a amazing uh, digital uh, catalog of like uh, for faculty members working at Academia Sinica, especially the IHB. Next. <coughs> so although right now they haven't, although the Academia Sinica hasn't provided like full image, uh, you know, access to like uh, people outside uh, their their institute. We do have access to the uh, catalogs, especially to the um, the archives of the IHP, uh, the Institute of History and Philology. So mm -hmm. they are like so. If you Google what, if you use put like keywords like Chen Yinke in C, in the CMKI, there are like more than thousands of like articles talking about Chen Yinke, Liu Rushi, Bie Zhuan. But very very, I would say very few scholars really take a look at you know, Chen Yinke's manuscripts preserved in Academia Sinica. So I think for someone study like intellectual history of modern China, you know, we should pay much, we should take uh, archi archives and manuscripts more, <clears throat> much more seriously. And I think Academia Sinica already provide like very, very useful digital catalogs for our researchers. So if you put something like Chen Yinke, there are more than 200 uh, pieces related to, um, his uh, writings, but you still, unfortunately, you you still have to, you know, you know, check these uh, documents in the Fusunian libraries because they so far I don't see there is like a, you know open access of digital images to uh, outsiders. Okay. Next, mm -hmm. so I published this paper uh, this year. Um, so I I, I think. Uh, their digital uh, catalog is, was very helpful to my writing. Otherwise, I, I couldn't get any new clues because they are, they are already like more than a thousand pieces of like, you know, articles related to Chen Yinke. So how could I produce something new? I think, I think the first step for our historians to pay much attention to new sources first. And I think the, that catalog was very helpful to me. Next. So I think that's it. That basically, that's my conclusion. Um, so. I think I would say, as a PhD uh, candidate completing my dissertation, how could uh, e-resources be helpful to my own research during this uh, difficult time? I would say discovery, practice, and research, these three uh, parts consist of like, um, you know, the main process uh, about my own experience of using uh, digital materials, especially, uh, you know, online resources in Taiwan. So discover things by yourself and then practice those websites, online tools uh, a little bit. And just like, don't be oh, so overwhelmed because there are so many useful sources provided from Taiwanese uh, institutions. But you have to get a you know, sense for a preliminary sense for, oh, okay, if I, I'm a, I, if I am a Xing historian, probably uh, Academia Sinica and National Palace Museum will be most helpful to, for me. So I will spend my you know, time uh, and give priority to those databases. If you are like a historian study like modern China, 
I would suggest you to take a look of like uh, inst database of the Institute of Modern History at Academia Sinica and Academia Historica. So, and after that, you can use, you can follow in Professor Chen's instructions to use those, you know, integrating platforms um, to do like cross-listing uh, search. So I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Professor Chen and Ning Wei. I'm a very bad moderator, not because I'm bad, simply because you have two rich presentations and Taiwan does have such rich open source knowledge and resources. Uh, but very limited time, but the, the questions are not so many. But how about the uh, uh, first question to both of you, could your slides be shared by all of us? In addition to uh, publicizing in the uh, Station Institute uh, YouTube, it's fine. Okay, sure. Could, could we also <clears throat> to be shared? No problem. Okay, sure. Great, great. Thank you very much. The second one, very quickly. Uh, if I wish to do studies on Taiwanese indigenous peoples, uh, what is the Comprehensive good sources I should go, Professor Chen, please. You mean um, comprehensive? Comprehensive indigenous, indigenous peoples. Uh, well, um, maybe then, then our, our center is the, the, the first to, to start with. So you're welcome to, to contact us. And uh, uh, now I'm in charge of the digital center for, uh, no, for, for digital culture in Agdam Sinica. And in Taiwan, we are several, you know, I just mentioned, and Ling Wei also mentioned that, you know, we, are, we do have a various kind of the academic institution like the National Time University and the uh, National Palace Museum. They are all, you know, devoted to uh, the building of the digital archive uh, based upon their collection. And well, they are eager to, to have a kind of collaboration with other institutes. As far as I know, like, uh, people at Taita, like, uh, you know, leading by Professor Xiangjie, he not only, you know, built up this kind of DocuSky, like Ling Wei also mentioned, he also has, uh, you know, <clears throat> teamed up with the uh, Professor Bo at Harvard University and uh, also with the Max Planck Institute in Germany. So uh, Great, thank you. And uh, I think uh, there are a few others, but I wish to quickly ask you one more. There mm. is documentation like a handbook or journal careful to access this these online resources do you have any um, my understanding probably uh, the the question is do you have a comprehensive documentation or handbook for accessing these resources yeah uh, we don't have you know a kind of really the, the, the documentation of handbooks but you know, you can. I just show you some of the portals in in my presentation. So maybe that's a, that's a good way to start with. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sorry. There's another one that is. Uh, I mean, then we definitely should conclude. Is the Grand Secretariat Archives totally open to the public? Well, now um, we we have you know like the the so-called Sukhan uh, uh we we try to you know during the covid 19 we will try to open to the public you know uh till the, the end of september yeah and uh, now we are figuring out way maybe we should you know uh, now we're still you know on underwaying the digitalization project and hopefully we can figure a way to open you know now we're still in new registration right and uh, and it's kind of we, we have to register and to uh, well, you need to pay some fee to to register and to have the access to this material. Yeah, and thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I hate to conclude, but it is the right time. So again, I think uh, we are going to show to share your uh, PowerPoint in the slides, and we are going to, uh, if anyone interested, could see the. Uh, East Asian Institute uh, YouTube channel, which is going to publish probably sometime next week. 
Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you, James. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.